guys, it's Pastor Chris, True Life Way. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great weekend. As you know, it is my weekend to work, so I'm bringing you another water plant talk. Although today we're not talking about water treatment or anything like that, but it's something that happened. And it's something I want to talk to you about. It may seem minuscule. It may seem like there's, you know, it's not really that big of a deal. And as you know, if you followed me for any length of time, that I like to preach on, you know, things that happen in life, you know, real real life experiences and all that. So I had something that happened to me yesterday that I want to talk about. And uh, the thing I want to talk about is a screw. Yes, just a tiny little screw is what I want to talk about. And I do mean a real life screw that holds wood together or sheet metal or whatever. I, I'm talking about an, a legit screw. And uh, it was found in a spot where I don't need to have a screw in it, okay? I, don't, I didn't need a screw in that point where it was at. So, But if you follow me on Facebook, you'll know exactly what I'm going to talk about. You'll know where I found this screw. For those of you that don't know, I was at work yesterday doing a... Uh, walk through of the plant we have a morning walk through we have to do so i was doing my walk through uh glanced i was i just come out of the post line building i glanced over where i had my my personal truck parked and i noticed something you know glistening or something was shiny in that coming from the sunlight on on the passenger side tire front tire of my truck so i walk over and i take a closer look hoping that it was just a rock because you know sometimes you get rock wedged in the treads and you know, you just knock the rock out and you're good to go. But what I found, it wasn't a diamond shining and it wasn't a rock shining, but I could see the top of a Phillips head screw had wedged had wedged itself in the treads of my tire. And here now I'm sitting here thinking, great, here I am by myself. The next operator's not coming in till, you know, for another 11 and a half hours at this point. So I, I, you know, I didn't know how long the tire was gonna hold air don't have a tire plugging kit with me and so today's message I wanted the, the title of today's message is a little screw and as I said I'm at work you're gonna see me glancing all over the place if there's an alarm you'll see me stop I'd splice the video but for, for those of you that have uh, ever gotten a screw or a nail in your tire you know at times it can be a little bit before you notice it you know there's times where you get a screw in your tire it may not deflate immediately it may take some time depending on size of the screw how you know tightly wedged it's in and etc i was fortunate enough yesterday to where i backed up the screw was just kind of kind of there i'm gonna post a picture of it in this video but it was just kind of there i could see it it was easy to get to matter of fact when to get not to get ahead of myself I, I was able just to back up not even a full foot half a foot maybe and then turn my tires to the right so i could get my uh, the screw out but anyways it was easy to see as the sun was coming up on the horizon and, and i don't know if you've ever seen any of the pictures i've taken but there, there's the beautiful the, the sunrise is so beautiful here at the water plant in the mornings it was almost as if this little screw was just begging for me to see it but for this message, let's just pretend I didn't see it, and that wasn't the case. When you know, when you get something in your tire, you'll notice your tire will start to leak, leak down slowly, slowly but surely. Every morning, you may have to add a little bit of air in it. I mean, at this point, we're just assuming you haven't noticed that there's a screw in it, or a nail, or whatever it could, you know, might be. Uh, you may get to where you're going with no problem, just to come, you know, come back out later on to, you know. Say you went to work, you come back, you know, to go home, and you see, oh, I've got a flat tire. And that's what I was trying to avoid. I didn't want to have to get off at 7 o'clock and then try to fix a tire because, you know, you work 12 hours, you're ready to go. But um, but these things happen, and they're frustrating, to say the least. And, you know, tires have to be inflated to get moving. We know you can't move around on a flat tire. Well, and you, I guess some people, you might ask them, they, you could, I guess but you can also cause damage to your vehicle. The pressure in the tires have to be regulated, monitored to keep from causing uneven wear on your tires, you know, causing them to wear down quicker, costing more money to replace them. And if you haven't bought tires in a while, let me tell you, they're not cheap. They are expensive. Long story short, you can't move properly with flat tires. And all it takes is a little tiny screw to get in that tire, something that's barely noticeable. You may not notice it for a little while. You just say, well, my tire looks a little bit low today, you know. 
it, it, you don't always necessarily see it all the time immediately right away. But when I seen this screw yesterday, I knew something had to be done or I was going to wake up one morning trying to get to work or trying to go home or whatever the case may be. And I'm going to have a flat tire and that's going to cost me time, cost me money. The screw had to be removed. There had to be a plug inserted into the hole so it will, you know, stay inflated. I work 12 hour shifts. Like I said, the next operator was going to be here till 7 p.m. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm thankful for a project manager that was willing to drive out here bring me a tire plug kit and offer to help me, uh, you know, plug my tire, which I politely declined. I'm thankful that he was able to bring me out on a Saturday morning, a tire plugging kit. <clears throat> he admitted to me that he bought a cheap plug and I, I mean a cheap tire plug kit and I could tell because the handle of the reamer broke as soon as I went to put it, you know, because you're supposed to ream it out. As soon as I tried to pull it out to try to saw it, it broke. I mean, it just snapped. Anyways, I pulled the screw out in the reamer to try to make a better hole for the plug, but I was but it broke, so I wasn't able to ream it out as good as I needed to. So, like I said, you have to work that thing. It's kind of like a saw; you just work it back and forth, and you'll hear it tear into the belts of the tire. And, I'm, and we're not talking about you know I'm not trying to teach you how to plug a tire or nothing. But I'm just trying to give you some backstory. I put the plug in, and since the reamer broke, it took quite a bit of effort. I mean, I was tired after I was able to force that plug in, and admittedly, I wasn't even sure if I had put it in far enough. I looked at it, and it was like, I don't know if it's, but I couldn't get it any further. I mean, I'm literally both hands on top of the tire trying to push it in, and I'm, I mean, I'm losing grip outside on my feet, and my boots are sliding all around. But how many times have we found ourselves going through life, going with the motions of, of, of just every day, just everything, everything that happens, just life, and we get ourselves into some trouble? How many times are we like that tire going wherever we tell it to go? Maybe you go somewhere you probably shouldn't have. You're gone and you messed up and you got a little screw in the tire. I'm telling you that the, the screw that I pulled out of my, out of my tire yesterday I don't know. It couldn't have been, you know, more than a half an inch long. I mean, that's all it was. And you'll see the picture of it. But just the little screw, and I could see that the tire was already starting to lose pressure. I could tell, you know, the tire was not flat, but it was lower than it needed to be. For context, I had to dispose of an old refrigerator on uh, Wednesday, uh, no, Thursday on my day off, and uh, going to the recycling, Greenpoint Recycling here in Winder, and Everything was going smoothly, but I don't know if I said it out loud, but I know for a fact I thought this, like, I'm going to get a nail or a screw in my tire. I was right. I, I definitely did. But, you know, I took the truck there to dispose of an appliance, come out with a screw in my tire. Didn't know it. The next morning it was fine. I was able to get up and go to work, no problem. But, you know, noticed it yesterday that the tire was a little bit slack. And as I said, how many times have we been there before? How many times have we done that? Did, did some things we probably shouldn't have done? Got ourselves in, in some, some trouble and we picked up a screw in our tire. And I'm talking about the tire of life right here. You know, and it only takes just a small screw to wreak havoc on your tires. And it only takes a small screw in our lives to wreak havoc. It just takes a small little slip up, a small little mess up, a small little sin, you know, because we like to label sins. And I've said it a thousand times and I'll keep saying it until <clears throat> I'm blue in the face. It only takes a little bit of sin that we allow a little bit of sin to creep in and it will start to destroy us. Just a little bit. And you know, well, it's just a little bit. You know, it, it, it's really, it's not that bad. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. But with that mentality, that is the mentality of destruction. When you start accepting these small little sins and just, you know, it's all right. It's not a big deal. We let a small sin come in, and before too long, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And I go back to the tire. Yeah, it was just a little screw. It wasn't that bad. The tire still had air in it. It was still moving. But if that screw was to stay in the tire, it wouldn't have been long, and my truck would have had a flat tire, and I couldn't go anywhere. That truck would have been sitting right there until I got it fixed. Amen? This message isn't meant to beat anyone up, and you're going to see by the end of this message, I'm not just trying to beat people up and say you're supposed to live a sinless life. But I mean, we're supposed to do the best we can. We're supposed to live a sinless life. But I just want to say we have to get the screw out 
and get plugged. I said, we have to get the screw out and get plugged. My tire wasn't going to fix itself. That screw, which it could have forced itself out, but as as tight as it was wound in there, I don't think it would have. But just suppose it had. Your tire is going to go flatter even quicker. But we have to get the screw out. We have to get plugged. Amen? The air in the tire is critical. Like I said, you've got to have proper, it's got to be properly inflated. You just ain't going to move, be moving properly on flat tires. Yeah, I guess you could. You know, some people want to push it. and Yeah, we can do it. The screw had to be removed. A plug put in place. Amen. A plug put in place and then reinflated to the proper PSI. The air in the tire could be like the breath if you're in your body if you want to look at it that way. The air in your body. Your life. You have to have air to breathe. And we know if you ain't breathing, you ain't living. Without air, you can't live. You have to have air to breathe. Oxygen. If a tire has no air, it ain't moving. It is like being dead. Let's go to Romans 6.23. Like I said, we're not, we're not beating you up today on sin. We, we try to live a sinless life, but we're going to talk about how we have a forgiven and a just Savior. Amen? Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We just read it in Romans that the wages of sin is death. We all know that. This is a verse I've used many times before, and I'll keep using it. But it didn't stop there. Notice he didn't just say the wages of sin is death. We know that. But the scripture, the verse did not end there. There is a critical piece in this verse at the latter part where Paul says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He didn't just say the wages of sin is death and then and that there's no way out of sin, that once the screw's in, the screw's staying there, it's going to leak down and it's going to kill you. No! Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is a way out. There is hope after all. There is a reamer and a plug, and his name is Jesus today. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our Redeemer. He can and he will fix us. Romans 3, 23. We all know this verse. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We see here that none of us are perfect. Not a single one of us is perfect. Not a single one of us have ever that not, not a single one of us has ever not gotten a screw in our tires at some point. We see that none of us have never messed up. For all, if, if everybody was in here, I would say that. Say after me, for all have sinned and come short the glory of God. When Jesus went to the hill of Calvary and gave his life for us, he knew we were going to mess up. He knew we were going to come short. He knew that we was going to need a Savior. He knew... We would need a way out, and He provided that. Amen? Yes, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Every single one of us is going to get a screw in our tire. Every single one of us is going to mess up and have and, 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 and has messed up. But there is a way, and that way is Jesus today. Amen? That way is Jesus Christ. 1 John 2, 1 through 2. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We see here we are not the sin. We are not to mess up. We're supposed to live a good life, do the right things, but guess what? If anyone sins, we have an advocate with Jesus Christ. We have somebody on our side. Further pushing the mentality that we need a Savior, and Jesus Christ is that Savior. He is that salvation. He is that eternal life. He is that atonement for our sins, and not just for us, He didn't just stop and say just for us, but for the sins of the whole world. Now, I'm not saying this to, you know, just go out and, you know, just just start picking up a bunch of screws in your tires because Jesus is our atonement. No, we don't need to treat Jesus 
as a get out of free jail card. You know, we're not playing Monopoly here. This, in fact, is not even a game. We like to treat it as a game. Like, you're going to get, like, three lives. Well, you don't get three lives. You get one life, and we got to do the best we can. I'm just saying if we mess up, confess our sins, he will forgive us. Which brings us to our next verse, which is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of our, all, all of our unrighteousness. We just read that. It is right there. If we commit, I mean, confess and admit our sins, he will hear us and forgive us. But, 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 oh, but, but, whoa, 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 I've gotten so many screws in my tires. I've messed up over and over and over again. I don't know why God would ever love me, why God would ever want to forgive me. You know, I've heard that so many times. Well, guess what? I've said it once and I'll say it again. I don't care who you are. You're going to mess up. You're going to pick up some screws from time to time, whether it be intentional, whether it's not. It doesn't matter who you are. Not a single one of us is perfect. Amen? Not a single one of us is perfect. We will all mess up. We are all human. It is human nature. We are all born in sin. We, that's just the way it is. It, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. How many of y'all heard that before? We're going to read it. His mercies are renewed for us every morning. Amen? Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. His compassion never fails. They are new every morning. And, and it says great is His faithfulness. That is why we are able to keep going. That is why we, we have a second chance. That's why we're, you know, he, He's the God that's going to fix the, the screws in our lives. He's going to pull the, the screws out. He's going to plug our tires. He's going to re reinflate us. He's going to breathe new life into us. Amen? Aren't you glad today that we serve a living God, a loving God, a just God, that He will love you when you mess up. He will love you when you come short. Don't, don't you ever think, don't ever think that you've messed up so much that God won't love you or forgive you. Don't ever think that. As I said, please, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not giving anybody a free pass to go out and sin all willfully without a care in the world. I'm just saying, take one step at a time. Amen? You get a little screw in your tire, let them ream you and plug you and breathe new life into you. The reaming may hurt, but it's necessary. If you remember when I was talking about the reaming, you know, talking about the reaming may be painful because it's like when you're reaming that tire, you're literally using it kind of like a saw blade. It's got rough edges on it, it's serrated, and it's cutting through the belts of the tire. It makes plugging a lot easier. It gives it a, a nice hole for the plug to sit in and, and fill in the space. He chastens the one he loves. Amen? Yeah, the reaming may be painful. And then I'm getting ready to get off here, but I want to end with a few scriptures. I'm just going to read it. We're going to pray. Hebrews 12. 6 through 11. For whom the Lord loveth, he uh, chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For verily, for, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So long story short, you know, growing up in life, you, you had a dad, you had a mother, you did something wrong, you did something stupid, you got whooped, you got punished or spanked, whatever the word you want to use. Some people might say beat, but that's the way it is. He, he, he chastises the ones that he loves. And yes, it may seem grievous at the time and, and not joyful, but it will produce 
good. Amen? It'll produce good. If you bow your heads, we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this day that you give us, God. We thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. I ask you let this message uh, be a seed planted in someone's life today, God. If they've ever wondered and questioned how you would love them, how you would forgive them, God, let, let this be an answer to them, Lord. That when you went to the hill of Calvary, God, you, your, your blood was shed for their mission for many of sins, God. It wasn't just for a few, it was for everybody, for the whole world. That we have eternal life and salvation through you today, Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for that, God. And God, I, ask, I thank you again for allowing us to come to you, uh, present a message on True Life Way on, on Facebook and YouTube. God, thank you, Lord, for using us. Let it be for your glory today, God. And we love you. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And just same pray. And the church said amen. Amen. Well, I hope you got something out of that. Like I said, it's a water plant talk. Wasn't really about water, but I'm at the water plant, and I just wanted to talk about some personal, you know, personal experiences. Of That's what I like preaching on. So just remember, no one, no one's perfect. You will get a, <clears throat> excuse me, you will get a screw in your tire from time to time. You're all going to mess up. But there is a loving God, a just and faithful God, and he is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins. Amen. That being said, we love you guys. God bless you. We will see you on the next one. Take care.